All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us on our online coaching workshop. Uh, this evening, we have Coach Sipa Mandlagumbi talking to us on the uh, basic understanding of setting up a wheelchair. Um, and he will also do this session on uh, the corrective coaching techniques. Uh, to those that haven't joined yet, they will catch up a bit later. And once again, recording of the session will be posted on our YouTube channel to watch at a later stage. So without further ado, I'm going to hand this straight over to Sipa Bandla. Thanks, Mr. Gumbi. You just need to unmute your microphone. Uh, Mr. Gumbi, your microphone. Hi guys, uh, can everybody hear me? We can hear you now. Please go ahead, Sipa. Oh, fantastic. My apologies. I think there's um, the network is really uh, not stable this side. Um, but yeah, let's just get going. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, so we have done two sessions already. Um, in fact, three. You know, one was done, Mr. So by Mr. Saunders. Now we're going to be actually progressing into, you know, basic chess setup. Um, in, a, in our previous presentation, guys, we 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 uh, we did. Uh, we, I personally would like to have more engagement from everyone, and uh, um, even if it means in between asking questions, please we can engage ourselves because it's, it sometimes becomes a little bit, you know, uh, challenging that we 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 presenting and we talking and we want people to engage and want to share ideas, want to hear people asking questions. Um, I know it's kind of like difficult and, you know, it's 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 so unique in a different way that we're doing a presentation and we do not see each other, but um, let's, let's engage. Um, and if you feel there is a word, uh, there's a technology that you feel needs to be really looked at and you want to find out about a little bit more about that, please um, ask, ask questions. And we, and we're also very fortunate that we, we've also tried to um, 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 up our game a little bit whereby we 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 now sort of have got all this presentation in a different languages so that's that's for us you know for me it's actually very a very unique you know um, um an improvement within our you know within, within our wheelchair basketball you know federation anyhow um thank you so much and thank you for joining us again um we're gonna be progressing once again uh, remember now we're talking about entry level and those that who have actually had a moment to 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 experience level one coaching and level two, you're gonna have to bear with us because it's imperative imperative that we go back to our basics, um, and if we do our basics right, and we we will be, you know, um, ironing out all the issues that we seem to be facing as we going up the levels of um, uh, pro, uh, club level and uh, national level as well. Okay. So now, obviously, with wheelchair basketball, we're basically using wheelchairs, you know, and um, and and there is a very specific way to set up a, a, a beginner onto the chair. Remember, this person is coming is basically new, doesn't know how to even be uh, sitting on a chair. Probably hasn't able to be on the chair before. But I can assure you, some even some of the players um, that are actually senior players that have been playing uh, and professional players that have been playing for some time. You'll find that sometimes they they they, they get into the chair, uh, they're looking for straps, they're looking for positioning, they're looking for balance, they're looking for comfort, but they just cannot find it because they, they have not been set up properly. So um um so basically when you're setting up a wheelchair to um, for sport, we are basically trying to make sure that there are three levels of 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 um, um of 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 um subjects that you really need to look at. One, 
we need to be uh, talking about st uh, stability, you know, stable posture and positioning into into the chair. And once you actually establish yourself into the chair, you are now being able to be able to propel yourself, like push, you know, and 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 in a most comfortable way. But if you're not set up properly, you're not sitting in the correct chair, probably sitting on a wider chair, you find it very difficult to push the chair. If you find that you are probably a high pointer uh, person, the four pointer as you're sitting on a low chair, you find that your knees are up by your chest and you're sitting like uncomfortable, like squashed up. You know, you'll find that you won't be able to really and truly be able to 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 push the chair in the most comfortable uh, most comfortable way. Uh, point number two: allow yourself to be um uh, to be as competitive as possible. So basically, once you're in a in a good chair, you all set up. Um, it, it actually promotes competitiveness. So you would need to be able to maneuver at speed. You know, your speed and agility it has to be have to be shown. So a beginner who's coming in, you know, gotta make sure that you know exactly, you know, um, uh, the type of uh, disability or, 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 or functionality that will be required, you know, in order to get that person to sit properly onto the chair. So once that person is in a chair, it's very important that you actually identify a competitiveness um, uh, levels of the athletes. So without that being able, being achieved, you, you won't be able to, to get, you know, the player to improve or maybe uh, to be comfortable. And um, obviously, when you're giving out feedback, the athletes will definitely not be able to give you positive feedback. And that's not what you're looking for. You just want to make sure that the, um, the beginner is quite comfortable uh, onto the chair and being able to, to, to maneuver easily. And obviously, we're looking at speed and agility. Okay. Um, basically, you need to encourage the players to watch, to watch their play. Um, to the needs of the team. Obviously, um, once the player gets into the chair, then how are they going to? What is their contribution into the team? You know, and and if the contribution is not as positive as you desire as a coach, you know, you need to find ways to make sure that the that the, the, the patient is is uh, patient. So the the player is is sitting comfortably, and and then you actually giving instructions, you giving. The, the drills and techniques that you desire for the player to 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 engage and maybe produce within the team aspects. You know, make sure that there is also safety. You know that you 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 you, you, you provide once you have set up a player into onto the chair. So therefore, you you will find that in most chairs we have what you call straps. You know, so the strapping is actually some some for some of the players we use foot straps. You can also use hip uh, leg stripes and you also use hip stripes but those have got a higher level of injury or maybe have got less trunk movement they normally use um, the chest strap so safety is also play a very very um, um, a crucial crucial role in, into wheelchair basketball next slide me okay um so um they, they, there are certain um, um, uh, rules, you know, and um, this is a part of, you know, IWBF um, uh, rules around wheelchair setups. Um, I'm not going to go in depth around the articles, but please um, uh, uh, do read the articles and understand where and how we are. Please stay on this one, Mr. Smith. Um, read and go through these articles and understand that in terms of how do you, how high must a player be seated? And um, you find in all the days you find players that were were, were sitting um, uh, on top of their legs, and, and therefore to get take, getting advantage in terms of the height. Some were actually double up on the cushions, and would, which also impacted on the on, on, on their performances, you know, uh, during the game. So, um, on as the beginner, uh, as 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 the player starting to come in, please understand that the one pointers to a three pointers. They're sitting on that on the 53, 53 centimeter height, you know, um, a chair. So basically, from the floor to the top of the of the of the chair or on top of the cushions. We must remember now that one pointers to a three point uh, uh, three point uh, uh, um, uh, uh, players, the, the cushion size that they are allowed to use, it's five centimeter and ten centimeters, which is the opposite. When it comes to um, 
uh, to uh, the 3.5 and 4.5, they, they are only allowed to use only the five centimeter thickness of the cushion. So basically, the seat height of the of the uh, the seat of the chair, you know, uh, it's from it should be about 50, uh, 50 centimeters, which is about 580 millimeters. So um, as I said, this 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 article is very very basic, but understand that this is these are the measurements that between class one and class three the height of the chair how high must the chair be and in front you measure from the front i will show you guys there is like sort of um, um, a, a, a diagram in the below that i'll show you guys as to how to measure on that one so obviously which a chair is it's it, it's a wheelchair basketball chair um it's it's got this bar in front can you move to the next slide baba smith okay all right um yeah all right so basically the chair wheelchair basketball chair it have uh, um, uh, several things that you need to consider one the big holes okay um uh, and it's got push rim you can cannot come into a uh, wheelchair basketball uh, play wheelchair basket basketball without a world without any push rims obviously and um and uh, there are very specific wheels in the different size, uh, size diam uh, the diameters there's a 24 inch and 26 26s and some of the guys that are using 27s i haven't seen anyone using any any other will be on 27 um there is um a, a crash bar or roller bar in front which is a uh, pretty much about 11 centimeters from the floor to the ground um from the floor to to the crash bar it's 11 centimeters and um if it happens you know like if before sometimes um, when you are about to start the game, you find that the official, the referees, will come and do measurements of the chairs. So they're looking for those uh, heights if it is legal. If they find anything uh, out of proportion, and they can literally disqualify that chair. Okay. So the 3.5 to 4.5 um, chair is as said from the floor to the top of you know the front part of the chair. You're looking at 63 there. What's what's that the general can yeah, okay? And then obviously the back wall, which is the the entity, okay, uh, it must be two centimeters above the ground. So um if it's higher than that, you'll find that the player becomes unstable and this chair starts to uh to rock, you know, um a sort of rock back and forth, and you hear a, a like sort of a bang, you know, like it hitting the floor as the player uh, sort of prop propel at high speed going forward. So you, you you just have to make sure that you you, you do the correct measurements and make sure that you you, you adhere to, you know, um, uh, to, to these rulings and especially when it comes to the chair, because if the chair is found illegal, it can be disqualified. And if it happens that um, uh, the player is found using two cushions, um, um, uh, that player can, can, can be disqualified and be um, sent off um, uh, off court and uh, and, and in, there, was, there, there is going to be consequences on that in terms of um, uh, of filing you know could be a, a technical foul and then they sometimes can go to to the coach or to the player as well okay then the one to, uh, for one pointers to to, to um, uh, thrives you're looking at um, 11 centimeters at crash bar, two centimeters um, at, at the back, and as I said, at, at, in front and on top there, there's sort of 53 centimeters high above the ground. Okay. Next one, Baba Smith. Any questions thus far, guys? Okay. All right. So um, um, for the beginners, um, uh, you'll find uh, most of the chairs, um, they're sort of fixed frame chairs. And some of the chairs, um, um, that some of the top end chairs, um, they, they, they sort of adjustable. Um, so for a beginner, it's always important that you try a player onto the most adjustable chair because you just wanna make sure that they sit comfortable. And if you wanna find, you know, the, the, the and find them into sitting into a position where they can actually show their true potential in terms of their um, uh, 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 performances. Okay, so um, it, it is it is um, uh, the, the most or like sort of the most wheelchairs can be adjustable 
somehow in order to best fit the um, the customer. So the customers would refer to what the players uh, or the beginners, and it is in the user's interest to set up the wheelchair uh, set up the wheelchair app so that they can maximize their ability to use the wheelchair while rem um, remaining safe uh, in doing so. So um, once again, it's it, it's ideal to get the players set up correctly, get them to the chair. But not everybody is quite capable of that, and um, especially coaches. But if you do not have an understanding as a coach, always ask a physiotherapist because most of the physiotherapists they go for these sitting sitting courses. They can give you advices as to how you set up or you set up a, 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 a new person onto the chair. Yes, our wheelchairs, our wheelchair basketball chairs, they're pretty much different from you know the day chairs, but the setting up of the chair is 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 actually uh, quite common basically um so um the, the, the placement of the rear walls okay the overall width of the camber it's something that you need to take uh, conscious of and the angle of the seat uh can so um the rear walls so when 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 the player is seated on the chair make sure that um and and the adjustment that you need to do you find the player must be sitting on top of the uh, wheel axle bar underneath bar and then uh, the width and camber also play a very crucial role because you don't want to sit, get a beginner to sit on a wider chair which is going to be a bit difficult for the beginner to, to push the chair because the wheels are actually far apart and there's also a bit of a play between the side plates and um, uh, the player would not be as comfortable and being able to, to maneuver the chair uh, correctly. And the camber, the camber we're talking about that angle we, we, we get from the rear wheels, the back wheels, the, the, the 24s and 26. The camber is crucial that we you understand, you know, how far uh, for the beginner to, to, to be seated on. The, the wider the camber, you must always understand it gives you quicker turns. Okay. You'll find most of the low pointer chairs, they find, a, 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 we will find that their wheelchairs are actually wider than the high pointers chairs. Because the, we, from the low pointers uh, uh, chairs, we're looking for that that agility and quick turns when they're actually doing the picks and also when they're defending. And they, they also have that also help if you have like a wider camber that you're pushing the defenders or uh, the defenders away from you. So whereas you know on the high pointed chairs, you'll find the camber is actually a little bit narrow. Um, you will see at the bottom. Um, you will find that the cameras are a little bit narrow. And that actually gives more top speed for high pointers, whereas the takeoff on the on the on the mid pointer chairs, like the low pointer chairs, is much quicker than the high pointer. But in terms of the top speed, the high pointers chair actually um, are much are much quicker. The sitting angle is very very crucial, you know, um, for especially for um, 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 like sort of one pointers to three pointers. You gotta find, you know, they, they, they're using that weight over there, that just link. It's like sort of, you normally say the bucket shape. So the angle, if it goes a little bit deeper, which means the seat is taking in the player into the chair, therefore the player will be comfortable. And sometimes if the player is just starting, now you need to actually try and raise the backrest so that they can fill the backrest uh, and lean towards the backrest if they sort of, grabbing, pushing, or turning. But once they have mastered the skills, now you have to lower the backrest, maybe cut the bracket off or, or, or adjust it for those chairs that can be adjustable. So the sling is actually parallel to the uh, to the floor. So it's like sort of sliding down to the floor. Can, uh, can I move to the next slide, Jerry? Okay. So, um, okay. Most most wheelchairs can be adjusted somehow in order to fit the okay we we've, we've, we've touched on that one the most um the more common element that the younger users is likely to adjust um uh, okay Jerry I'm not sure why we are repeating that okay but on the on the on the picture there on the on the on the, uh, uh right hand side we talk about the wheelbase the wheelbase is basically the distance from the axle to the casters in front how it, how far must be part so that will be a will base so when whenever you make you're making measurements like most of the chairs now are, are custom built they they, they, they are, are designed 
to fit a specific user. So the wheelbase is defined from the hip to the to the back of the knee. So the, the length of the chair, the seat length of the chair is defined from by your measurements. If you sit it on the chair and then you measure, we measure from the hip to the back of the knee, that will be the length of the chair. So that will be the, the, the base of the, um, so the, the will base of the chair, how far apart from, you know, from the axle to the near part of the uh, front casters. Okay, next one, that's me. Okay, for them. The length of the wheelchair and is oh, okay. Obviously, I've just touched on base. Okay, is as um, uh, wheelchairs and will base. The distance uh, between the point of the floor contact of the front caster's wheels and the rear wheels the, um, is, 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 is is determined the turning radius of the wheelchair. So basically, if the wheel base is too short, you'll find you turning very quicker. And um, um, but if it's long you'll find that you're going to have like a longer turns and you do not wish that to happen. Therefore, you'll find that for taller players, um, uh, it becomes, you know, like longer, but because they've still got longer arms, they are able to, uh, to, 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 to master the skills of turning the chairs very quickly. Okay. The shorter base can be faster, as I indicated too, and, um, uh, and, and desirable. Okay, for the most uh, wheelchair sports. Okay, but remember, when you when the rear um, rear wheels are moved forward, okay, your wheelchair will tip over backwards. So basically, if your wheels, your back wheels are moving forward, you 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 you're no longer sitting on an axle bar. You're moving forward, which means the wheels are going forward, and your your weight is falling backwards. Therefore, your weight is actually the back then it's easier to tip over. And therefore, that, that's a reason why you will find that um, uh, um, um, now the chairs have got anti-tips. And for that mere reason that we want to avoid, you know, the players have to tip over to any game as they're taking a shot. Some of the players are using the backrest and leaning backwards. As they're leaning backwards, then the chair can just tip over. So that's a reason why we have anti-tips, okay? And when the front cast because um, wheels are too far forward, um, too far forward, the back of the wheelchair, your um, um, of the wheelchair, your wheels will tip forward. So once again, we just have to find that balance as to where are you seated? Is your weight a little bit forward or the weight is a little bit back? But it's not something that is quite easy to do. But it's it's important that for you guys to 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 understand that that. You'll feel that the player seems to be moving a lot. You feel like there's a lot of hand speed, but the guy is not moving. And you gotta ask yourself why. It could be the chair that is not set up properly, and also probably the player is is also not seated correctly onto the chair. So there are quite a number of elements that you have to pay attention to. But it is important that you guys understand this so that when he, when when you're seeing a a, a a new player coming in. And there's the chair you want to get this player into this particular chair. Is that chair going to work best for that um, new player? So uh, until you find the right chair, um, it's it, it's actually uh, advisable that you, you know all of these points. Next one. Uh, Any questions? Sipa, far, guys? Sipa before yes. you move to the next slide, there's a question from Cizwe. Uh, he wants to know when you get yes, a when you get a new chair yeah. and the dimensions and specifications yeah. of the chair are up to standard over a period of time yes. and play with the same chair, yes. what could change the dimensions of the chair? Is it because of wear and tear example, mm. the, cr the, the crash bar going below, correct. below 11 centimeters, if you can just uh, clarify that. Okay, correct. Thanks for that question, Caesar. Um, yeah. Yes, guys, after a period of time, remember wheelchair basketball is a contact sport and sometimes it gets too aggressive. You'll find that certain points of the chair, um, they, 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 they become weaker, especially the crash bar. And if that happens and the officials before the game in any tournament, whether you're going for inter international games or you're going for any local games, please do check on those chairs. You don't want the chairs to be disqualified. So if, if it happens that that happens, um, uh, you find the chair has lost that bit of, uh, of shape, uh, you got to have to see the, um, the service providers and can make sure that they, they do 
like sort of cut and real world that chair uh, to get it to the right um, um, size or, or positioning that is required. So um, never take those chances. So um, that you're gonna be sending a chair out there and sending anklets out there with that proper uh, chair size and height. And also the cushions, like I said earlier on, the, 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 the one pointers to three pointers, they are allowed to use five to 10 centimeter cushion, but high pointers are not allowed. Therefore you'll find most of the high pointer cushions are a little bit thick, um, thin because they have to use them. They, um, the, the five centimeter, but um, in olden days, some players will find that, you know, they cut their back wrist and the uh, special eye pointers, they cut their back wrist because they've got stronger upper uh, body and strong core muscles and they don't necessarily need a higher back wrist, but they're sitting on the higher on their back wrist. That, therefore, it actually gave them advantage. So all of those things, you know, the, 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 the referees, you know, the technical team, they check for all of that. So it is imperative. It's very important that you guys check on those. Okay. Um, is any other question? Uh, I don't know whether I said safe about that. Okay. So if 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 you look at the chair, um, awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Cesar. Okay. If you look at that chair on the on the right hand side. Okay. If you look at that width okay that that camber yeah it's the, that that definitely that player is is a mid pointer player or a low pointer excuse me but the camber is a little bit wide okay so um the wider the camber the the better it is for 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 low pointers because they give you that quick tense that's that's that's, that's what is needed and um, they can block and and, and pick very very quickly uh, and obviously the turn of the chair is actually on the spot and once they have mastered that. So the low pointers needs to actually drop down, go down a little bit and go lower. You'll find that sometimes the coaches, they find um, a, a high pointer a players. Yeah, this guy is a high pointer, is not a paraplegic, is not this and that. Remember, do not look at disability, look at the performance. Sometimes you'll find there's a guy that is sort of um, not so tall in terms of height, you know, and, and they're sitting too high on the chair, but they're struggling to turn because the height, their height is not ideal for their, for their performance. So be aware of that. It's what I've been picking up, for, especially when it comes to, to the schools games and some of the development uh, developing teams that I've seen out there that they're actually pushing these youngsters that, okay, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm not a paraplegic and okay, I'm using crutches. You know, but I'm short. I cannot be sitting high because remember, if the higher you go, you sitting too high, you are away from the force of gravity. If you are sitting uh, um, away further from the force of gravity, that means you're fighting those tents. You know, so it is it is important, and that would be also clarified once we start doing our um, um, classification. I think Leandro will be touching base on that. Okay, okay. So basically, the wider the wider your chair, it is easy to turn. That's 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 an understanding. That's a very easy one. And um, uh, so, if the manufacturers understand what type of um, uh, sort of uh, fold or or, or uh, axle bar that it has to be used, you know that okay, I've identified five players here that are mid pointers. I've identified uh, two players that are the high, uh, sort of uh, threes and three and a halves, and then high, my high pointers are here. So that will be submitted. Then obviously those manufacturers and the chair designer they know this is what i'm going to be looking at when i'm doing the chain how high the chair must be and how how low it must be but you know so but if it's a sort of the development chairs it actually becomes a little bit of a tricky one but that's the that's the that's the idea out there when it comes to the canvas you know but increasing that um by increasing the negative camber of their rear walls that's for increasing the distance um between their points of contact with the floor okay so the, the further it is the distance between the two wheels, it's actually going further and out, you know, therefore we're giving, giving more camber and you're sitting a little bit lower. If your wheels, your wheel, sorry, if your wheelchair turns too fast, it is possible that you will often lose your balance, okay? So now understand who is sitting on the chair, okay? the functionality, and their ability to actually control and uh, 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 be stable on the chair. You need to understand, you know, why is that actually causing it? So if the chair is not right for the players turning too quick, 
you know, some of the chairs are very light out there in terms of the material used. So um, uh, if the material is too, uh, it, it, it's too light, the chair is too light, and the camber is too wide, and you, you're sitting at a, 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 a beginner onto that particular chair, you'll find that you, that that beginner, that athlete will be will not be stable onto the chair. Okay, so be 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 aware of those things. Next one, unless there's a question in that one. Okay, okay. When the back part of the wheelchair sit upholstery, sit upholstery, we're talking about the, the velcro that you find, you know, on 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 the back post of the of the um, of, of, of of the wheelchair, okay, is significantly low, okay, than often parts. Your upper body will be closer to the uh, front part of your rear walls. So basically, if you find that if your your your, your back post, your upholstery is a little bit low. And now you'll find that yourself is sitting too far to, in, in, in front of your, your rear walls. Therefore, it's pushing you forward. When it's pushing you forward, sitting on the axle, the turns would be easier. But if you're sitting a little bit back, once again, you'll find the chair will be a little bit tippy and too, too fast and too quick for you or for the beginner. Okay, next one. All right. So, um, if if you look at that angle of that picture there on the right hand side, okay, you will see that it's actually on that sort of on a bucket shape, with that, and and that immediately you know who's gonna be jumping into that chair. And if you look at the backrest height, it's upright. Therefore, could be a one pointer, a one point five, or a two pointer who's got like slightly, you know, um, 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 minimal trunk movement. Therefore, they'll need to be given that angle. You know, that angle is very important because it takes them in, they become more stable. Then you just have to add on the strapping onto the, onto the chair. And the backrest will be, at the, you know, will be um, uh, 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 a little bit higher and they'll be stable. But then if you look at the front part where the front casters, the small wheels in front, we call them casters, and the forks, the forks is that little bit, that small thing in front there that takes the, the, the wheels. Okay. So the housing of 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 the of the of the chair where you insert the fork must be hundred and degrees hundred no, sorry ninety degrees pardon me must be ninety degrees to the floor and therefore the chair will be more stable onto you know uh, uh, on the floor and will be easy to maneuver. Same applies to the entity tips. Some chairs some guys prefer to use um, uh, one entity. Some guys prefer to use two entities. There is, there's no issues around that, but we must make sure that that is actually hundreds, uh, sorry, ninety degrees onto the floor because you don't want the, you want to, the chair must be smooth basically. You don't want any issues with the chair. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, so. The, the point of the front casters housing uh, that holds the casters and the fork wheels should be at the right angle, which is 90 uh, to the floor. So uh, I've touched base on that. Okay, the rear wheels should be parallel to each other. Obviously, you know, um, uh, so you know what I want to parallel so that the butt and the straight forward. If they look skewed, definitely that means the chair will be pulling on one side. So you'll find sometimes when you're in a game situation. There's like a heavy contact on the side, and the the, the wheel, you know, would bend. The frame of the wheel would bend, or, or or sometimes it's the axle that bends. And if that happens, then you find that it's a little bit skewed. Therefore, it it won't be moving smoothly and won't be actually um, uh, 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 be able to go straight. If you just roll it forward, it will just pull up towards what to towards one side. Therefore, you have to that oh well, ah, this chain is actually not good something is off here i need i need this chair to be checked then you send it to the to to, to the manufacturers and have that actually uh, be assessed and be sorted out okay otherwise your wheelchair will try to move um in equal directions okay i've touched based on that because if it's skewed and it's not parallel then obviously it it, it will pull on one side it will behave on one side and therefore you won't gonna get the maximum performance from the athlete or from the player that is coming through, and will be sort of um, uh, worried about you know having been using 
an, an, uh, an uneasy sort of not so that it's so difficult wheelchair. So it would be important that you get them to sit on the on the proper chair. You gotta check on all of those things, especially the axles. The axles sometimes do get bent, and do not use bent axles. Okay, if the wheels wobbling a bit, the spokes are loose. Make sure that the spokes have been tightened up, because if the spokes are loose, which means some areas of the of the wheels, those spokes that are still a bit tight, they're actually gonna be pulling the frame of the wheel, and therefore it's gonna co cause more like uh, sort of imbalances of the chain. So and Baba Smith, guys, if anyone has got a question, please do stop me. Okay, all right. Fitting the user into a wheelchair and uh, the issues um, of stability. Okay, working out the proper sitting position in a wheelchair makes it all of the difference in the in the world for how, um, uh, what in how you perform. Uh, because okay, if you're not set up or seated properly, you're not stable on your chair, your pushing will be compromised, the turns will be compromised, the shooting will be compromised. Very, very important that you get the the, the, the beginner sitting on a chair must be comfortable, must be um, uh, sitting correctly. And by the way, some of the athletes they're using um, their day chair cushions, which are designed for specific reasons. Do not, do not, do not ask them to use the chair, the chair. Take it off, use a proper cushion that is designed for that particular chair. Because some of the abominable cushion, they've got the wells and also uh, shapes underneath and around the bumps and everything. But you cannot allow that cushion to get from, from the, the, the chairs into onto the chair. So if they're not stable, they're not sitting correctly, they're not sitting on the correct cushion, then obviously their uh, their performances will be compromised. Okay, so please allow um to do advice, you know, and allow not to you know, for the players to use the day chair, uh, so the day day cushions onto the basketball chair. I've seen a lot of that happening. We need to stop that. Okay. Next one, Baba Smith. Okay. Okay. You also to, you also need to understand. And um, uh, and use the best pushing techniques so that um, so as to be as fast as possible by uh, standing under and uh, stay under control, keeping a physical fresh, keeping physically fresh and pos um, uh, po uh, as possible, and maintain your physical balance. So once you in in chair. You gotta be still your 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 fingers onto the push rim as you push and you work forward. Um you're gonna have to excuse me if I got cut guys, so if connection is also might just be unstable here. Yeah? I can see there's a reporting here. So um uh, uh you 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 you're strapped in yourself into the chair, you're sitting stable, you're keeping your bo your body posture forward as you self propel for uh, uh, propel forward, you just allowing your hands to roll around the push ring as fast as possible and and fresh therefore you're still maintaining uh, still maintaining your physical balance so you if, if you feel that the athlete is still wobbling onto the chair must more we must know that probably uh, the chair is not good or alternatively the strapping is not correct or the chair is a little bit wider for the athlete then you need to change the chair okay if the chair is a little bit narrow and you've got somebody um, uh, that is all sort of a big, uh, have got like a bigger for the chair, um, that will also uh, uh, cause uh, a bit of discomfort to the athlete and might just end up causing pressure sores. You therefore do not allow that as well, that, uh, 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 an athlete sitting on a, on a small chair and obviously he or she is actually bigger than the chair. Try and find a suitable chair for the athlete. Okay. Um, the nature of the wheelchair and the laws of phys um, of physics can, can make it difficult to perform at um, to uh, to number two uh, to uh, perfect and achieve both optimal sit uh, sitting and stability and superior wheelchair handling. Once again, if 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 it 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 it's, it, it's clearly defined, if you're not in in sitting correctly, you will not perform to your maximum. You're not gonna be, be able to handle the chair. So it is important that once you're stable onto the chair, um, um, you're strapped, you're strapped in correctly, 
you will actually find yourself and find that the athlete or the beginner uh, can give you the maximum that you really need as a coach. Okay. Everything that you do improve your your mobility, turning, reaching, pushing, and speed. Often means sacrifice um, in your own um, uh, stability within your, your within your um, your wheelchair. So basically, it refers to all the athletes. If you feel if there is no good turns, you know, the reaching is impossible, the pushing is not good, then obviously there is a lot of sacrifice that is happening within the chair. Then you obviously are, are going to be facing quite a bit of challenges there. So make sure that whenever you've done your practice session, now it's about you're about to give feedback. They definitely have got to make sure that um, I think we've got somebody who's got the mic on. Um, that you 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 got you make sure that the athlete is able to to maximize maximize their performances and decide which aspects of your playing style are the most important. Then you will then then you will be in a position to uh, to um, intelligence and choose when when and uh, uh, when you um, are faced with making. Um, a compromise. So, it, it, once 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 you establish yourself, you know you know what type of play. You know some players wants to tilt, one some players wants to quite speed, one some guys wants to defend. You know, depending what your coach have identified, especially with the players, then you 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 you, you can make those quick decisions as now as a player as to okay, find what what position is that? how how do I then position myself? You know, how do I then defend? How quickly can I get from point A to point B? Um, how, how how would my pushing uh, 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 techniques should be like? So you really have to, then they'll start analyzing that little bit of uh, skills as they actually grow into the game. But this is this point, it will come uh, very much so into level one um, uh, 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 training and our level tools. So it's more of, you know, once the once individual has now sort of mastered the, the skill levels. Next one. Okay. Within certain limits, the lower you sit on your wheelchair. So, Sipa. Yes, Dom. Another question uh, from uh, Siswe. Uh, there are players like Ayabonga, for example, who are mm. tall but sit on a low mm. pointed chair. Is it possible to train such a player despite their disability? to sit on a high pointer chair till they are comfortable for the sake of having a tall player. Okay. Um, that, so that's a very good uh, question, Caesar, but it also depends on the coach. Okay. So what, what do you want from that player? Okay. Ayabonga is tall. Do I want Ayabonga to go sitting higher at what, what would be the purpose of getting him to sit on a higher chair? Do I want him to be able to, 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 to defend or do I want him to um, uh, be able to, to rebound? Um, uh, do I uh, uh, want him to, to, to go for different uh, sort of offensive rebounds? What do I want from him? So, um, uh, or do I settle down with Ayabonga sitting low with all the speed it's giving me, the agility it's giving me? Um, uh, uh, do I change his, his sitting position? And then if I change his sitting position, I'm pushing him high, and it is a 2.5. If I'm pushing him high away from uh, also gravity, therefore I'm going to be um, uh, compromising on his stability. So what do I then do? So it, 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 these are the questions you as a coach need to find, and 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 because you now have identified how you're going to uh, uh, approach your season with with the players that you have, and 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 if that happens. Then you're gonna be compromise a certain uh, element of the game where these players now from from this speed that he has been giving you sitting higher, and um, uh, you look at the chair that Ibong is using. It's a locally made chair. Uh, now you 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 also think to yourself, is it set up on this on this chair correctly? Therefore, hence now it's giving me such a high performance uh, in 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 the game. He has mastered his chair. It's not the weight of the chair, but the setup of the chair 
fits in perfectly. So you as a coach, you need to decide this. What, what do I do in this particular situation? We therefore cannot move a player to a high, to sit higher if you want that speed. Because if the higher it goes, you lose the speed. Okay. But you will gain, you know, that. position because it's going to be competitive uh, 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 rebounds. So you, you have to be wary as to who do you have, what what am I needing and what I'm looking for from that particular player. So uh, I, for one, you know, looking at Ayabonga, he's perfectly, you know, seated, seated on the chair. Same as Junior, uh, um, um, Junior, um, Dr. Inam Junior from Eastern Cape. You're looking at the way he's sitting on the chair. He looks tall, but he's not really tall, but he's sitting on a higher chair, but he has mastered the chair. He's sitting, he's using 26, not 24s uh, on his chair. Therefore, the top pick is actually good, you know, for him because he's got the longer arms. But if he had shorter arms, then definitely do not put him on the on the on the 26 inch wheels, rather actually have him using the 24 inch wheels. So you have to find that balance as to what you know, I think it's some of the slides that will be coming through that you will have to look into the individual skills, you know, of the athletes. And it, it, this is what the athlete is giving me. This is this athlete is, put, it's, is capable of doing this. And then if I change his game or if I change his sitting or if I change his chair, what am I losing and what am I gaining? So it would be important that you, you know, you look at all of those elements. Any other question? Okay. All right. Um, I'm I'm hoping Caesar, you you were answered there. Okay. So fantastic, and thanks. Okay. With within certain limits, the lower you sit on the wheelchair, okay. The closer you turn to to the to the floor, okay, you will have faster turns. That's 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 a given. That's that's, that's science. You know, I've been touching on the, uh, uh, on, on that one quite a, quite a number of times. But if you're sitting too high, you must know that your your takeoff won't be as quick as the one sitting on the lower chair. But your top speed, because your 26 inch, will give you that faster um a uh, 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 push once we start uh, start the goal. You know. But the takeoff, it's gonna be different. The turns on the lower chair actually much quicker, you know, because of that camera I spoke about, I spoke to you about, and also very close to 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 the ground. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. I don't know if we should go into depth today. Then you must um, determine the angle, you know, and depth that that angle, the sitting angle, and everything would definitely be between the coach. The athletes and the manufacturers. Once you identify the sitting angle, how 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 well I must be seated? Do I need to be in a bucket chair? Do I need to be in a flat uh, 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 chair, um, flat seat chair? Um, uh, do I go to a six degree chair? Do I go to a zero degree chair? Do I do I want my athletes to go on a uh, twelve degree? It's up to the coach and up to the athlete. And the coach have done this analysis, have seen the athletes, and then understand. Okay, this guy. This is what is giving me, and this is how I'm going to be. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm, I'm going to be putting in. Uh, we had. Um, I know there was one guy who was a one pointer from Germany, sitting in a bucket shape, but he's using twenty seven. He's in a bucket shape, but he's using twenty seven inch walls. He, he, his speed was so so good that you would not think, hey, no, but how is it possible that guy is sitting that high, but he's a one pointer? But if you look at the chair. You look at its functionality, you will like, no, I mean, the, I mean, the guy is definitely is a one pointer. However, why, why is he sitting on 27? He's sitting too high, you know? But once again, once the chair is set up correctly for that particular athlete, you will, you, you will get the maximum out of the player. And then you'll think once the athletes have uh, mastered the chair, then the performance becomes better. And you'll think, hey, no, there's no way we're getting 
cheated here. This uh, this player is not actually a one point that a player could be uh, a two or two and a half, but my players are all sitting low, not necessarily. You go, you do have low pointers that are sitting on higher chairs, but if the angle and the camera of the chair is um, um, uh, uh, set up correctly and the rear walls are set up correctly, you should not have any issues. Okay. And that's, that actually covers this whole slide here. Okay. Okay. You want to put enough camber into your rear walls. Okay. That will actually um, uh, go back to you know the, the low pointers and obviously um, the mid pointers as well. But for high pointers, I have to bring it in a little bit. Okay. How, how much camber is best is defined upon your body weight. Okay. Now, um, uh, and your speed and, and your playing tactics. Okay, how much camber do you want? Do you want it further out? Do you want it in? You know, are, are you able to push faster? Okay, because if your camber is wider, which means you open up your shoulders and you open up your arms. But if your um, the camber is actually closer, it's in. You've got the forward movement and like oh, that's where you find for most of the high pointers. That is just a forward movement. Where else? Um, with most of the low pointers, you find that the elbows are going out a little bit, which is not the correct way of pushing um, uh, because the camber is just too wide. And sometimes it's as uh, detrimentary to the shoulder damages in the long run. We have had players that have uh, shoulder problems after a long run because the, the pushing techniques and the chair that we're sitting on was just not, uh, was not correct. Okay. Obviously, we talk about the foot plate. You know, foot plates are also adjustable. How high the foot plate must be, how low the foot plate must be. Shall I actually go deeper in or shall the foot plate go, uh, go front? It depends also on, 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 on an athlete, you know. And obviously, you, you would look at to the, look into your play and say, okay, this is who I have. This is what is needed on the chair and how the foot plate should be. And, you know, because not every single chair have got to have a similar foot plate. Some guys will have like strapping around the knees because they want to accommodate their feet, you know, and some of guys will push their feet goes right underneath into the excel um excel bar and uh, and and once they got it underneath then they strap the same underneath because they want to get that maximum stability onto the chair. So you you look into who who do I have? What is it gonna be effective enough if I change the foot plate, if I change the sitting and if I change the camber? And um, uh, how big is my player? How small is my player? Obviously, the camber also is defined by that. But then, obviously, is the performance going to be maximized? Um, uh, you as a coach, you need to you need to look at that. I look at Chotai two years ago. Chotai from Japan. He was sitting on the low pointed chair, but during the games last year, I was at the beginning of the year. He's sitting on a higher chair. So now you find yourself, hey, what's going on? This guy is actually was, was performing this way uh, last year, but now you can see he has lost a little bit of his push because they have actually changed his chair and they drop it in front, okay? And then the seat angle is going back a little bit and then we find the front bar is actually longer. And therefore, if you have a front bar that is actually longer, therefore you're keeping the, 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 the defensive or the, um, uh, the defensive uh, players away from the, then you can actually give it a good angle to shoot. So you, you you shape your chair, you design your chair, or you give a chair that you know would fit your type of your type of play as a coach and for the player. If I'm moving fast, guys, please let me know. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I spoke about the foot plate. Okay. And uh, obviously, how close the soup plate must be seated, um, must be, must must be, and then between the two, uh, to your two feet, um, uh, 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 is it is it is it is it comfortable for the feet? Are your the feet seated uh, sort of nicely onto the foot plate? Can I raise it up? Can I lower it down? You know, so all of those things it's a play pattern to you know the wheelchair setup. But once again, sit down with the player. Obvious once the player is getting to the chair. The player would give you uh, uh, as much as you think you as a coach you know more about about the chair, but the player will give you a better understanding. Say now, but coach, I'm just not feeling quite good here. 
okay? And then you say to yourself, okay, what must I look into, okay? Then can I just do adjustment here? Must I do an adjustment there, okay? So obviously, food plates are very crucial as well, that you need to actually adjust them to make sure that, you know, um, uh, there's enough pressure um, uh, on, on, on of the foot onto the food plate, but there is no risk of pressure pressure source, you know, like maybe rubbing off on the side because some of the parapegians who's got like bigger bigger legs, but you find that the the the, the post the bars that are running down to the foot plates are too close to 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 their legs and the legs are touching on the side. You know, as they push, there's that bit of a friction now and again. Remember, most players that are actually low pointer they do not have a full sensation at at, at, at the lower or lower part of their body. Therefore, you need to be aware of that. It's like, hey, the, you know, ah, the legs, the thighs are touching on the side. Be careful of that because that can also cause um, a sort of um, a pressure source. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. Once you have identified and the players you have you have studied the pushing, you know, techniques. To find out how far forward you, 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 your 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 upper board should lean, and while you're pushing. So, um, remember, it, it, when you get them onto the chairs, now it's teaching them the skills as to how they're sitting. You know, you if they lean forward, they keep their body, um, um, uh, sort of uh, um, uh, streamlined, cutting through the air. You know, leaning forward, and then just just make use of their arms. So. The setup of the chair, it's either you're pushing the backrest forward, you're sitting there, or, or you're having the right cushion, and you also have uh, the seat depth and seat length of the chair. You know now this player is gonna be, it's gonna give me everything that I need. Now you'll find that, oh, okay, now how can I hold my body up? Okay, and how can how far must I lean forward? How far must I lean backwards when I'm stopping? So that balance. As, as the players progresses into into the game, it becomes natural. It becomes like sort of a, a muscle memory. So um, the setup, once again, do not compromise, especially for the beginners, because they will they will not really find their true potential if that balance and to the chair related to their performances uh, and, and 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 functionality. Is, is is it doesn't come to the same power, same understanding, then you you're not gonna actually have that um that 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 balance or maybe that maximum performance you need from 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 the player. Okay. Um, slide by slide, later by uh, now. Okay. But that 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 um uh, that pushing technique is like leaning forward, hold your body or posture upright, and then. You just actually work on your arms. You know, remember what I said, your arms and shoulders. It's just you keep your body steady, your your upper, your your, your upper torso, you keep on keep it steady, cutting it through through the air. You just work on your arms and shoulders and hands. And 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 in that way, if you're not rocking your body back and forth, like you're pushing and you're lifting up your body, you're actually gonna be creating resistance as you push up. Remember, you're moving forward, but you're rocking back and forward. You're raising up your body. There is, that's going to be that resistance from the air that pushing you backwards. And then you're going to be losing one or two seconds from the opposition. So cut through the air, encourage the players to lean forward, hold the position. They just work on their arms, sorry, their shoulders, arm and hand. That's what should be focused on. That should be the two pushing technique. Any question there? No questions. Okay. So um, uh, very important. Okay. If 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 you as a coach and and if a player you as a player you you need you want to perform on your highest level, you always it's your responsibility that you. You keep your wheelchair into a good working condition. Um, that you check on your axles, you check on your tire pressure, um, uh, which is um, I think you're using eight bars um, on on uh, on our from our hand pump, so, um, maximum uh, eight bars. 
you 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 know your chair is is actually ready for you. Um, we do find that uh, we have players that comes through for trainings and, and and camps, and then they come with chairs that are not into into good working conditions. Uh, we do urge you guys as coaches out there to help us out that you know when you're sending the players and the players are uh, you have set up into the good chair and they have got proper pressure onto the chair. The tires are all still got those threads. Um, they're not as smooth and they're no longer they're not smooth. If you find they're smooth, then you're gonna have to change the tires. You look at the check the bearings, uh, see if there is no uh, uh, dust into the bearings. There's a squeakiness. Um, send the bearings out of, if the bearings and the casters are not loose and um, they have to maintain them regularly, spray them, check it on cushions, backrest, they, they're not torn, you know, and some chairs will find most, some of the chairs of their backrest are torn and then the players are, are leaning onto the on the post and the posts are keep on digging into their skins and to get into in, into their bags and it creates a lot of problems and, and, and injuries. So. Uh, please be aware of that, that the condition of the chair has got to be um, um, on, the, on, on a good, 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 in a good condition uh, in order to get the maximum performance from the player. Okay. Um, uh, regular maintenance checks. Um, um, regular maintenance checks. Always have to have your, yeah, have the tools there um, uh, um, to, to, to make sure that you find that there's any loose screws, bolts, and things like that, yeah, that all tighten up, but check your chair if before the game, check the chair after the game, okay? Check your chair after uh, before training and check your chair after training, then you can take it away. Because the next time you come into the in, into the game, into a practice session, and the chair is not in a good condition, then you have to, you know, you're compromising the coach's time and also you're comp compromising your own time as well because you're not going to get the maximum out of you. So it's important that you guys um, stress it out to the players that guys the chair is yours you need to look after the chair thank you okay so we spoke about um, um uh, the chair setup and uh, i did touch on, on 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 the classification uh sort of points in related to you know how you get the players set up onto the chair you obviously once you know the players uh, class a class based and functionality and an ability to define the classes ranging from one to four, uh, sorry, to one to 4.5. And then you know, okay, there, okay, these are the players that I have. Okay, now I need to make sure that now I see that this one is a low, low pointer. How do I see that? Obviously, the classification is going to be coming up. And then how do I then take that player and which chain that needs to be, be set on? Classific uh, classification helps to ensure the competition by um, the fair competi uh, competition by grouping players into a similar function and ability together so um uh, this is a little bit more of, uh why do we classify our players okay uh, because we want to make sure that we keep it to the fair level and 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 the competition is fair because um if you feel that there's 14 points and above on one one team and other teams you know is 13 points you know that's that's gonna be, there's not gonna be any fairness so we're just making sure that that in terms of the performances and the functionality is actually fair in terms of competition. Okay, the the classification system considers the player's lower limb function, functionality, trunk uh, stability, and functional of arms um, arm movement. Once again, um, if you have seen there, they didn't speak about the disability. They speak they spoke about lower limb functionality. They spoke about trunk. So you. have we need to move away, especially from uh, us as coaches. That you know, we we're looking at players. Say no, but I'm a polio, uh, 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 and and Jerry is a polio as well. But why is Jerry three point five? But I'm a four, and and this and that. We look the classifiers look at your functionality. How well do you perform? They look at your range of movement. How far can you extend? Okay. They look at your stability. They look at your trunk. You know. So um, uh, those are little things that happens before the game, but um, um, it's important that U.S. coaches understand and and, uh, and consider this, you know, when you're actually setting up the player to the chair. Nice one, Jerry. Okay. 
So the class one players, um, uh, we're looking at the significant impairment. They basically, they have uh, limited trunk, uh, limited or no trunk movement, basically. So they, they, their movement is just, just above, you know, the, the chest. Um, um, and therefore, those players definitely need to have a strap around the, um, the, the, the chest as well, so to keep them stability. They've got waist straps and they've got knee straps and they've got the sort of leg strap and of course of foot, foot straps. Um, and obviously the sitting angle of the chair uh, tends to differ from the twos and, and threes and 4.5 because it has to be deeper and, and therefore it's going to take them in. So um, uh, their, their balance is not compromised. Um, the rear um, uh, uh, entry of uh, uh, on arms movement of self propelling and maneuvering, it's like very, very small. It's just mainly using the arms. You find that they do not rock back and forward like high, like most of the uh, um, high pointers and also um, uh, uh, mid pointers. They basically just merely lose using their arms. You see there's like no movement on, on of, of, of the trunk, okay? Uh, basic chest setup of the class one players should um, uh, prioritize stability and support. It, that has been pointed out. Um, uh, you cannot have a blow pointer sitting on a high chair and uh, whereby, you know, the, the angle of the seat is not actually accommodative to, to the player. So stability is priority number one for, for, uh, for one pointers and 1.5s and and, um, and 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 obviously support you find that the backrest is a little bit too high okay because obviously they do, they do not have or maybe they've got limited trunk control next one baba okay um okay uh set up um uh, for class one players Seat height, adjust the seat height to ensure that the player's feet can reach the floor. Okay, when you're sitting them up, uh, you get the cushion onto the chair, get them transferred into the chair, make sure that they, their feet are still, you know, if they're sitting a little bit forward onto the chair, but their feet is on the floor. Okay, you don't want them to sit too high. Once again, it's, it's, it compromises, okay, their stability. Okay, so make sure that the feet are still on the floor, then you know, okay, fine, the chair is low enough for this player. But if the chair or the, if the feet are like sort of hanging a little bit, then you must understand that, oh, okay, I might just experience a problem here. Okay, yes, we are limited in terms of equipment, but uh, bear in mind that these are little things that you as a coach needs to be, to be wary of. Okay, okay, then the sitting angle, Angle of seat slightly forward uh, to assist uh, with forward propulsion, uh, 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 propulsion. Okay, so basically, as you propel forward, so the um, uh, the players must be able to sit a little bit forward, and the backrests are pushing them slightly forward to actually have help them when they self propel forward. Okay, obviously the camber is a little bit wider. Okay. Okay, no shading for somebody. Okay, the camber um, is, is a little bit wider for uh, for stability and agility. Okay, well, I mean, like we all know, you know, and, and the approach of most coaches is saying, you know what, uh, my one point is, I need you guys to go peak and peak and peak and peak and peak. Do not shoot this, 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 because why? You have to make sure that they, they're stable, they're stable and they, 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 they maximizing their agility. But encourage your one pointers to be able to take those shots as well, the layups and the outside shots, because if they're stable enough, they, they should, should not be an issue to take those shots. So make sure that you encourage that from the one pointers as well. Okay, the wheel position, uh, position the wheel slightly forward or is um, for better balance and, and maneuver, maneuverability. So um, uh, uh, the, the wheels that are speaking of is the back wheels, okay? Because obviously we're taking the, the the weight a little bit back and make sure that they, if you take it back, it means that you're giving a bit of lightness, you know. Therefore, they'll be able to turn a little bit flat, uh, faster. 
So um, you need to actually be aware of that. Yes, difficult one with basketball chairs because there's some, you know, some of the chairs that come fixed frame, they're not adjustable, but there are chairs that are uh, adjustable out there. Next one, Baba. One point else, guys, but the classification is coming up. Classification will be coming up. Okay. Class two players have more trunk functionality, but limited lower limb functionality. Okay. So there's a little bit of um, uh, just your class twos, basic twos and two and a half. Uh, yeah, they've, 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 they've got some movement, you know, of the of the trunk, but you know the, the lower limb, like basically the legs, is still you know um, and not, not being able to move. Therefore, you will find that the the performance is a little bit better than the low pointers. Okay, uh, they're really on 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 combination of arm trunk and uh, trunk movement and uh, propulsion and uh, maneuvering. So yes, they still use the trunk movement. And obviously, and their arms, you know, but it's not it's not as 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 high as as compared to the threes and three and a halves, you know, and uh, but better than the ones and ones and the one and a halves. The basic uh, the basic chess setup for class two players should be balance, uh, balance stability, mobility, um, stability and mobility to support their uh, uh, varying levels of the trunk control. So the main focus there for class two players, okay, it's it's stability and mobility. Okay. You you gotta make sure that you maximize your 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 uh, the, we used to call them the ball carriers. You maximize the the the, 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 the trunk uh, 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 in order to be able to take a shot and, and be able to defend and be able to reach a little bit further. Okay. Okay. Sit height. Adjust the seat height based on the player's preference and comfort. I did indicate that earlier on that your know, players will tell you exactly how they feel about the chair. Okay, please be, be aware of that uh, when you're actually doing those adjustments and setups. Okay, sitting angle, keep the seat angle neutral. Okay, uh, neutral into that means into zero degree and slightly forward, or so pardon me, or slightly forward to accommodate the trap movement. You should be able to. Uh, uh, to get them to sit slightly forward and make sure that if they're moving forward, are they able to reach forward and they're able to go sideways um, in order to, to, to check you know, their functionality. Will camber, set the will camber to provide a balance between stability and agility. Um, uh, consider the player's ability to, um, to use trunk movement and, uh, and, and, and propulsion. Okay, so it's very important. Okay, very, very important that you 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 want your class two players, you know, something that you cannot get from the one pointers, but you want to see the speed, you want to see the, 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 the stability, you want to see the agility. So make sure that when you that the will camber is set up. Um, uh, maybe, yeah, I think maybe one will have to do a, probably a, a, a practical session around setting up of, of, of chess, you know. Um, a basketball, especially the cameras and the lights. Maybe we'll look in that um, going forward. Um, will positioning, will po uh, uh, position the walls uh, for um, uh, uh, optimal balance and maneuver maneuverability. Consider the player's um, um, reliance and uh, on both arms and trunk. Remember, it's trunk movement here, though it's minimal, but it's still there. Okay, and obviously the arms. So whenever you position the walls, especially when you talk about the walls, you're talking about the back walls. Whether you're taking them forward, or you're taking them uh, backwards. But you must remember, once they actually seated on the chair, have them drop their arms, you know, uh, on the side of the of, of the walls. Let them reach, okay, extend their fingers into the axles. Then you know that the the, the wall, uh, the the axle camber is actually on a good position for the player being able to push forward easily or roll backwards or maybe give those tens you know so be be considered considerate of that next one that's jerry okay so the class uh, class three players they've got a very good trunk functionality and and some lower limb fun, um, uh, um, uh, functionality so that's why we find that most of the polios, they actually start between uh, one, uh, threes uh, to three and a half, and uh, some of the um, amputees, depending how far 
the amputation is, you know, above me, let me just tap on that above me, then you know, okay, for the, how long is the stamp? These are new rules that just came up, but Leandro will touch base on that. So uh, basically there you have for the very good trunk functionality and lower limb functionality. Okay, uh, they really combine, uh, they really on a, com uh, on, on com a combination of arm trunk and leg movement because they, 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 they still got that bit of movement on the legs. And as, as they, they move forward, as they self-propel self forward and they're maneuvering the chairs, you know that, okay, they still got that bit of uh, stability. They still got a bit of uh, skills that they're gonna show off because said some of their muscles are still sort of working, okay? Especially on the legs. Yeah, their hands are the same, the, 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 um, uh, sort of uh, the polios. Most of the guys actually are three and three and a half around the polios, depending how severe is the polio anyway, okay? Um, the basic chair sets up of the three point layer should prioritize mobility and, and, and responsiveness, okay? How quickly can they respond? How quickly can they change? Uh, they tend they, they tend the chairs. How quickly can they uh, tilt? You know. So when you're setting up those guys, you gotta think about that. So it's like all is about mobility and and obviously the responsiveness of of the player. Obviously, trunk movement is always there and leg movement is always there. They can reach further, you know, from uh, to get the ball, grab the ball, rebound, you know, than you know, the tools and two and a half. Okay. Uh, seat height, adjust the seat height to allow uh, for um, uh, comfortable leg movement, okay, and, uh, and stability. Consider the player's lower limb functionality. Seat angle, keep the seat angle neutral or slightly backwards to accommodate the truck movement and the leg ascension and, uh, and during the propulsion, okay. Wheel camber, Set the wheel camera to provide agility and responsive, uh, responsiveness. Consider the player's ability to use trunk and leg movement for uh, propulsion. Okay. Wheel positioning, wheel positioning um, um, uh, the wheels, uh, sorry, position the wheels for um, uh, optimal balance and maneuverability, consider, considering the player's uh, reliance on arm, trunk, and leg. So, Obviously, the seat angle has got to be, yeah, it's got to be a wood differ. It's on the neutral position once again, it's flattish, okay, or slightly uh, backward because now you know that this player is able to actually give me a bit of, 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 of trunk there and it's now got the balance. You can still use his leg and, and, and when they're pushing the chair, they're going forward. They, all of these muscles, uh, the functionality is actually much better. The camber once again, in the camber for most of the uh, three point, um, three point, uh, three point players and also three point five players is actually slightly narrow. You know why? Because it provides agility and responsiveness. Because if it's wider, it becomes slightly a little bit compromised. So it's it, it, it's actually better to just bring them in and um, um, uh, so that you you you'll maximize their uh, body movement basically, their functionality again, and obviously um, their leg. Uh, as well, because they use their leg when they're tilting. Like some of the guys are just stepping down on the um, on their foot plates, pushing up to reach for the uh, for 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 an offensive rebound or defensive rebound. They're getting more. Uh, they're getting more advantage if if that that happens. So it's 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 um uh, uh, it's good that you consider all of those things. You know, as you actually do the setup of the chain. Okay. All right, the class four players have the, uh, uh, at least um, the least impairment, okay? And uh, with good trunk functionality and significant lower limb functionality. Um, there is new laws that just came out, but once again, the end will touch, will touch on those. Um, um, the eligibility, uh, who actually qualifies, you know, to play wheelchair basketball. So we had had players that came in as able body players that actually play wheelchair basketball, unfortunately, they cannot go further than you know the local you know uh, uh, games because of 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 their functionality. Therefore, they we're trying to make them. I think this laws actually to make sure that people that actually play basketball they've got certain limitations on the lower limbs um, or, or deformities, so to say, on the lower limbs. So, um, uh, but the, our class fours and class five and uh, four point five. They've got a very strong um, uh, sort of uh, body movement, 
paste on 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 on, on the legs, trunk, um, um, uh, and, and arms. So they they the more stronger players. So when you're setting up um, uh, their seat, adjust the seat height based on the player's preference and comfort. Once again, seat angle seat angle keep the seat angle neutral, slightly back. Once again, pre pretty much similar to the the three point five and and uh, so threes and three point five. Okay, wheel camber set a wheel camber to provide agility and responsiveness. Okay, we we want those guys to give us responsiveness. Okay, wheel positioning. Um, uh, position the wheel to um, to uh, optimal balance and maneuverability, considering the player's uh, reliance on, on on arms, trunk, and leg movement. Okay, yes, uh, some 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 four point fives, you know, um, uh, the like below knee, you know, double knee, uh, double um, double knee, uh, below knee, and double amputation that become four point five. Those guys they can still um, be considered that they have that leg movement because it's actually below me. So they become four, 4.5s. Four Next one, Jerry. Okay. Well, in uh, in conclusion, understanding the basic chess setup for uh, uh, wheelchair basketball, basketball players is crucial for coaches to ensure um, um, optimal performance and safety of the, uh, on the court. Okay. By considering the specific needs of different classes, okay, coaches can uh, tailor and uh, this and the test setup to support each player. You know, it goes back to your question, says when it okay, there's your answer there. Um, uh, to support each player's uh, um, uh, support support each player's functionality and ability effectively. Thank you once again for attending on this particular set, uh, presentation. Um, you guys gotta stay on. We've got another presentation coming up unless there's no um questions um over to you baba smith That's yeah thank you thank you sipa yeah uh, not sure if there are any other questions let's just see here uh musa lamini has asked uh, in terms of a player players who have one leg that can't bend are they what are the ways of the the frame uh, can be adjusted? Um, so one leg does not bend. Um, the seat, the seat depth. Okay. Uh, from, from the uh, from like remember when I actually said earlier on when you doing when there's measurements being done on for the chair. So you 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 measure from 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 um, um, from the hip to the back of the knee. But if, some players do not even have the knees. Okay, so you measure from the from from the back of the hip, okay, backrest to the end of the on the touch you line leg, you know, and then therefore uh, that's where you're gonna have your chair post, you know, to the um to the foot plate dropping down. So you're gonna have to extend the seat depth of the chair. 